John for The Hot End. Today I want to talk to you about filaments and one in particular. There's a lot of opinion out there on what filaments to use to print functional type things. PETG to me is the most versatile filament. You can print models like those of you that like printing benches and, and groots I'm Groot. and baby yodas and all that other stuff that you find. You can use PETG for that. The more intricate models with a lot of retractions are a little bit harder with PETG. It still prints those sort of models very nicely. In order to do that, you have to have your printer set up perfectly. The other purpose for PETG is for structural and useful prints. Now by that I mean prints that are going to be used in a mechanical situation or used outside or used that the part will be under some form of stress. PETG is brilliant for those sort of things. Now there's also quite a bit of opinion about on how to print with PETG. I'm not going to tell you how to print with PETG on your printer. I can only give you broad outlines on how I print PETG on the various printers that I have and you can take from that whatever is necessary to print on your printer. Don't be fooled that PETG is easy to print, it's not. Having said that, once you get all your settings right, you get used to using it, it is quite easy to print with, but it takes a bit of practice. And the reason for that is PETG is like printing with soft bubble gum. It sticks to itself really, really well. So if you've got a dirty nozzle, and heaven forbid we would have a dirty nozzle, the layer lines that it's laying down can easily stick to the outside of the nozzle and lift from wherever it's supposed to be. And this causes all sorts of issues and you end up with a big ball of bubble gum on the end of your nozzle. Temperatures and settings you'd have to dial in for yourself and it depends on the type of PETG you're using and the colour of the PETG you're using. So really it's just a trial and error situation to get it to print nicely. I print PETG on my printers at around 240 degrees for the first layer and 235 degrees for the print. Now this may or may not be right for you. Uh, this is what I use. The first layer, getting it to stick to the bed, is not really as hard as you might think. It's really no harder than PLA as far as sticking to a bed is concerned, but there are a couple of little tricks. Firstly, you do not want to squish your pet G as hard down on the bed as you would for ABS or PLA. You want a reasonably oval shaped first layer. Uh, and by that I mean the Z should not be too close to the bed or too far away from the bed. This is a trick that you'll learn with experience once you get into printing with PETG. The other thing is you must print your first layer very, very slowly. I printed it at around about somewhere between five and 10 millimeters a second for the first layer. This is critical to get good bed adhesion. The bed itself, you can print PETG on just about anything. Uh, once you get that layer height right and your temperatures right and your speed right, it will stick to pretty much all the current bed materials that are out there. It sticks particularly well to plain glass, but you can also use painter's tape and, and glue stick and hairspray and, and um, the proprietary type beds. It sticks to pretty much anything. But once you get your settings right, it will actually stick too much. And you can do a lot of damage to your print bed surface trying to get a print in PETG off. 
So it is critical that no matter what surface you've got, you need to put some form of layer underneath the print. Now, be that hairspray or glue stick or diluted PVA glue or anything like that. And it's actually the opposite reason than you might think. It's not to make it stick to the bed, it's to make it so that you can unstick it, so that you can get the model off the bed. I have seen where PET G has been printed on a plain, clean glass bed, and in removing the print, it's actually removed chunks of glass from the bed plate, and that's not good. So once you get that sorted and you get your first layer down, uh, print speeds I usually run for PET G at around about between 35 and 45 millimeters a second. Again, that's just me. You need to experiment with that. Supports and infill, no problem, pretty much the same as, as PLA. Don't be scared of PET G. PET G is a great filament to use. It does, however, have some disadvantages, particularly if you're printing something that's in parts. PET G by its chemical composition is very difficult to glue together. Two-part epoxy can work in some instances, but if you want something that's going to hold and is going to be strong, it's really hard to glue PET G surfaces together. The only thing that I have found to glue PET G is CA glue or super glue and not the expensive ones. Now this might sound strange, but the only CA glue that I have found that glues PET G, cheapest, nastiest super glue that you can buy and that works with PET G. The other problem with PET-G is similar in that it's very hard to paint. Not a lot of paints will stick to PET-G. A smooth PET-G surface, you will struggle to get most paints to stick to. But if you want something that's tough, solid, strong, not brittle, then PET-G is your go for, as I said, mechanical or stressed parts printer parts, other parts, as you'll see coming up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Subscribers are good. And ring the bell, bell ringers are good too. Now here are some examples of stuff that I've printed in PET G. I'll try and explain each one as we go through. Okay, we'll start with the structural stuff. These are the slides on the bottom of a sled that goes on my table saw. They fit into those little slots on the table saw there so that you can slide it backwards and forwards. These purple things, it's part of a taper cutting jig. Just a couple of bits that I knocked up on Thingiverse, printed out in PET-G, makes it adjustable. These are doweling jigs. The purple one is for drilling holes for dowels. The blue ones are for marking out where to drill the holes. Again, structural PEC G. This is my thickness planer and I had to make up an adapter so that my dust collection system would fit onto the back of the planer so I made that up and printed it out fits in there nicely this is another doweling jig this is a self-centering doweling jig so you the theory is you just open it up put it on the piece of timber and then close it together and it's automatically in the center of the timber and those metal pieces are just glued in there with epoxy. This one is a dust extraction system. It's hooked up to a shop vac. It creates a cyclone so that 
the sawdust and particles actually drop down into the bucket rather than into the vacuum cleaner. You'll see in there, that's where they all drop down into the bucket. Again, pet G. And another adapter for the hose. This is a, a pocket hole jig. This is on Thingiverse. It comes with its own vice setup so that you put your timber in and you can drill pocket holes for screwing pieces of timber together. Works very well. There's a little bit of ABS involved in that, but mostly PET G. Now this is on my caravan. You'll see that little clip there. The original one broke, so I made one up in Thingiverse and printed it in ABS, which lasted 12 months and the UV made it brittle. So I reprinted it in PET G and it works terrific. And also on the caravan, you'll see that black piece is a stone guard and the U-bolts that hold that stone guard to the chassis rail were too long. So I had to just print a packing piece to go in underneath there. And again, that's in PET G and has stood the test of time. The rest from here on in are models that are printed in PET G. Some look a little better than others, but you'll get the idea that you can basically print anything in PET G. This one had a lot of supports that you would have seen earlier in the video, but it cleaned up nice. And all of these models came out very nicely indeed, actually. So sit back and relax and watch these last few models. Only takes a minute or two, and I'll catch you on the next video.
See you next time.